Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season premiere of The Blacklist. A great season premiere, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, let's talk about that intro, like the title card sequence. It's so weird, because it's like, it cuts to like Reddington, and then it cuts to like the task force, and like, or rather it cuts to the task force and back to Reddington, but I'm like, that's so weird. I mean, I'm, of course it would be that because I was like, what are they going to do? And I'm like, but it's just like, we've seen Megan Boone there like with James Spader for like eight years. It's so weird to see it with that. It's just, it's so weird. And it's just like, I, I know, I know. It's just, I never processed this when I was during the season eight finale, when I was even reviewing the season eight finale. Didn't cross my mind to think about, oh, what are they going to do with like the intro to, didn't think about it till we saw it and I was like, oh, I prepared myself for it. It's just, it's still, it, that's going to take some getting used to. Like once again, it's like an intro that's half the same and the other half of it is slightly different like all the Megan Boone related stuff is you know so that's crazy but where we start off we have Denbe undercover and it's like Harold talked about that last uh season about like potentially putting Denbe in that position and Denbe's undercover and this guy who's a part of this gang known as like the Skinners I say gang but it's like a, a long-standing organization that has ties to hundreds of years ago they're like well-known thieves because it's interesting because like Reddington talks about later on all these different like groups who have done different things across different countries had different names over the course of the centuries and did different things over the course of the centuries and the Skinners being one of them but uh, Dembe's partner ended up getting killed he tried to shoot him in the chest but the guy who runs things is kind of like oh I'm not stupid and he shoots him in the leg and ends up killing a cop which is sad because home dude was engaged to an Elizabeth, which got Dembe thinking about his Elizabeth. It's like, yeah, hey, she's not mine. She was a friend, and she died two years ago. But yeah, that, this was his partner that just got died. He was going to engage. He was um, going to propose to his girlfriend, um, and that was cut short. And the moment Dembe got a chance, bam, bam, put everyone down except for the the main main guy. Everyone else got killed. Sadly, Dembe also found himself in a situation where he's got like third degree burns and stuff like that from the aftermath of like the truck exploding and everything. So. Um, he ends up turning to Harold, who Harold isn't like he's a former FBI director. What he actually does now, whether he's just like full blown retired or not, because he was getting interviewed early on about everything that went down at the port. Um, and obviously the conversation comes up about like, right, having one central bad guy to kind of keep everything in line because, you know, and even we see, um, everyone, wide, well, we saw, um, wrestler watching the report we also saw aram watching the report and obviously for aram it's like right he's working on like a startup business and it's like right he doesn't work with the fbi anymore like the task force like disbanded now i don't it doesn't what came first the chicken or the egg did reddington leave and then the task force broke apart or was it just a combination of like Liz was the glue that held everything together. To be fair, this started because Reddington came to Liz. The task force was kind of built around that. And without her, everyone fell apart and went their separate ways. Like I said, Aram's making his business. You have um, a wrestler just like fixing cars. Um, like I said, what Harold's 100% doing, we don't know. But he went to Denbe and Denbe needs help because he wants to find Reddington because Reddington can help find the guy that's responsible for killing his partner. Uh, and so... I love that uh, Harold is like, oh, I'm too old for this when he finds out. Like, he has to go all the way to Cuba just to find Reddington. And he, the bartender, which is uh, David uh, Zayas, um, Zayas, I'm sure probably I'm butchering his last name. Uh, because it's, you know, uh, the reboot or kind of reboot slash continuation is popping up next month. The thing I know David the most from is, the best from, the most from, the best is uh, Angel from um, Dexter. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I believe that was his character's name. Once again, I still need to start my rewatch because I have not seen Dexter in like forever. Tangents and all that aside. So, turns out he gets drugged, wakes up in a place, and it's like, oh, like this shaman lady is like rubbing an egg on him. And it's like, oh, crack it open in the water. What does it look like? It's um, cloudy. She's like, oh yeah, it's like the sun coming out through the clouds. It's a good sign, good sign. And it meets with Reddington, which to see Reddington like... They, uh, James Spader to have like completely shaved because at least you know he usually like has it kind of buzzed on the sides for him to like be completely shaven is kind of like it's almost like 
weird to look at because I'm like I'm not used to seeing him in like fully shaven like that, you know. Um, now whether his condition's necessarily gotten better, we don't know. To be fair, he it has been two years so, but he has like shaman people to help him. Obviously, he doesn't want to get involved with the case because he's like, if I do, I'm going to like if I come back, I'm going to come back. It's kind of like a John would think of like, yeah, just when I, you know. Uh, I think I'm back, but not wanting to be back. I, you know, circumstances have led to it, so he doesn't want to get mixed up in it. But uh, he has to help because this is also for Dembe's sake too. So, but it turns out this is for the Skinners, and obviously uh, you have Harold going and collecting most of the team. He, we find uh, Park. She's married. She's not doing field work, but kind of gets called into you know help out with this case anyway um lying to her husband about like yeah I'm, I'm not doing any field work because obviously she knows what it does to her we've seen like how like it can get the best of her and how she can lose her temper we've already seen that um poor aram is trying to give his peach in his uh pitch and everything and cooper picks the, he's like oh i hope i didn't catch you at a bad time he's like no you didn't you caught me at the absolute worst time but they're kind of reunited wrestler wants nothing to do with it because it's like yeah if they're getting any help from reddington he doesn't want it it's like yeah like i, I had to put a big no on it which it's like at the end of the day wrestler blames reddington for what happened to liz and i thought was the line i thought was so interesting was from Aram where he was like oh yeah but at, we all do like you know but i think he's like but at the end of the day i think all three of us here can recognize that mr reddington blames himself as well and because of that i can i can forgive him for like what happened to liz because he blames himself that's why he's doing all this self isolation you know so because i don't fully know cuz like i brought up earlier like Cooper was referencing, like, you know, Reddington's position of, like, right, him being a criminal that he is keeping everyone else in line. But he's still been keeping up his criminal empire. He kind of has no choice because he doesn't have a successor to take over it anymore. But I was curious, like, has he been continuing his criminal business? If not, like, I, it seems like because the way he's talking to Vincent later on, it does seem like he's still got his hands in feet in all things criminal activity like he can't back down because he wanted to pass everything on the list but obviously that's no longer an option anymore so um it's just interesting because he talks to vincent later because vincent he's the head of the skinners who had to pass it on to his successor and even reddington's like yeah i know what it's like to pick the wrong successor and just things kind of blowing up in your face didn't pick the wrong successor it's just things kind of fell out, out played out the way they did and now there's no one to fill that role. I'm still curious, like, what he's going to do about it. Because, like, I'll jump ahead and say it. There's part of me that's like, you don't think he's going to make... At first, I was like, you don't think he'll make Wrestler his successor? I'm like, no. But I was like, not unless he makes the entire task force his successor. Like, them as a whole. Like, he might te he might get Harold, Aram, Park, and Wrestler, to, and even Dembe, to run it together as a unit. Because that way, it's not just in one person. Like, you know, it's like, because of who they are. They are people that uh, Liz loved. And, you know, it's like, you know, the torch can't be passed on to Liz. It can be passed on to the petite people that will carry on her will, do what she needed, which plays a role in the episode, but we'll get to that soon enough. Um, maybe the... God, I feel like it also would potentially go to Agnes at some point. Because that's why I was wondering, like, are we going to, like, time skip a lot? It's like, no, we time skip two years. Doesn't mean that window doesn't leave itself open to be like, yo, like, eventually it could be Agnes's. Now, whether they go down that route, I don't know. I doubt, I doubt Reddington will do that, considering, like, well, sadly you got your... <sighs> Everything you've ever done was for the sake of protecting your daughter and your granddaughter. And now it's like, yeah, your daughter's dead. And it's, you weren't able to protect her even though you were setting her up to be your successor. Successor, Because like everything you've ever done in your entire life has been for the purpose of protecting your daughter. You loved her. You kept her. You kept secrets that maybe would have helped her. Things wouldn't have played out the way they did. But it's like, you know. It, the sad ending regardless, I think it was a necessary thing of, you know. Everything had to play out a certain way for Liz to become who she became. Uh, for better or for worse, I think it... I, I don't know. That's a whole tirade I was about to go on and just about. Like, I think it was a necessary thing for Liz to be who she was in the end. And I think the journey versus the destination type of situation. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey and everything she went through to forge her into who she was. Um, despite her mistakes and everything, she tried to do the right thing, uh, despite, like, her, like, hell-bent on, like, getting revenge against Red. But I think 
I don't, I don't know. I'll just kind of leave it at that. It's just like, I think everything was a necessary evil to get to the point where Liz was. You know, that's where I kind of leave it at. But, um... Obviously, they don't have, like, full-blown government backing. They don't have the resources that they did, had before. They're actually all in it alone. To the point, like, Cooper, like, obviously Cooper got into the field a couple times. This is him, like, full-blown active in the field. So, uh, Reddington did come to check on Dembe, but he tried not to bother Dembe. Because both times, uh, Dembe was out of it. The first time, like, Dembe was completely out of it. The second time, Dembe was kind of waking up, but Reddington didn't want to stick around. Um... Because it turns out the last time they talked to each other was like a year and a half ago. But also, Reddington is, um, like, it turns out Cooper is the one that's taken in Agnes and is raising her. And obviously, Reddington wants to see her, but he can't. And it makes sense. Because, and, Her like, Reddington completely understands that. Because it's like, right, I got too close to Liz. Hence why we got the entire series that we've gotten so far. And now, why she's dead now. It's because of me, like... He's like, I, I get it. You don't want to take the chance that if I get close to Agnes, everything I did was to protect Liz. And yes, you know that I'm going to do everything to protect Agnes, but you don't want to take the chance that Agnes might suffer the same fate as both of her parents. Because let's face it, her mom and her dad are dead because of Reddington. Granted, it's... Ugh. There's complicated circumstances because it's like directly yet indirectly connected to... Reddington and the reason why Tom's dead, it, but it's directly connected because, like, Kate, it's just, it, it, there's layers and layers to it. Like, obviously, Liz is the most direct, but Tom is too, so it's like, he's responsible for both of your parents being dead, so, of course, it's just, eh, you know, so, it's not like Reddington fights it, it's just, it sucks because he wants to see her because now that, like, because you were, the, you were, you are always in a very important thing to me, but it's like, you were the most important thing to the most important person to me. Like, Liz meant the world to uh, Reddington, and it's like, of course, like, you've, you've always meant the world to me, too, I want to protect you as well, but now, like, I have to give you double everything, I have to make up for the fact is your mom, your dad can't be here for you, so more so, like, I'm triple double, I'm tripling down on caring about you, you are everything, and so, even his new Dembe, um, uh, she seems even more like, she even, seems even more of the silent type than Dembe did, um, God, they were definitely going to get, like, I mean, Dembe, like, is always, he spoke when he, like, it's kind of like, he always speaks when he kind of, like, when the time arises, and, uh, but, um, his new person obviously doesn't know anything about it, she's like, how, who is she to you, and it's like, oh, he, he's like, uh, she's everything to me, um, because she's like, yeah, you haven't told me what she is to you, and it's like, well, you're about to find out, no, she's everything, as he's watching, uh, Agnes at, like, a soccer game. So, and even she calls Cooper out for it. It's like, you keeping a girl for him is cruel. Do you want to be cruel? And, you know, kind of leaves afterwards. But, essentially, I love that whole, like, fake scenario to create it. Uh, to meet with, like, the previous head of the the um, Skinners. And that was, uh... That dude fits it. And the reason why him and Reddington had a falling out, it's like, because of one word. It's like, one word? It's like, yes, X. X. Oh, his ex-wife, which wasn't actually his ex-wife at the time. So, they set up the whole thing of, like, uh... Aram and Park pretending to be cops to arrest the bodyguards. Of, and, you know, it's like, oh, Reddington picks them up and it's like, right. So this is all about stealing microchips. In particular, there's a, a very specific and powerful microchip that, like, no one knows how to make. And so that's what that dude, um, his code name was like, his fake name was like Beck. I, they de talk about his real name at the end of the episode. But essentially, he's trying to go after the guy that's responsible for making it. Because if you can't find out how to make it on your own, why not just kidnap the dude that makes him? So that you, because it's like, it's a large money industry that, you know, Reddington was like, right. Uh, if you, the Skinner's like, I'm actually going to help you protect the legacy because if you get mixed up on all this, like the government's going to tie like heavy, like get heavy down on like, cause this is some important stuff that they'll start messing with my business, just like they'll be messing with yours. And that's just going to be like drawing so much attention. So help me help you type of situation. Well, help me help you and help me at the same time. So 
situation they find themselves in, even to the point wrestler uh, decides to take part in it because Aram shows up at the guy he's trying to do the pitch for. Like, I love that the guy's wife is like, no, I give him 40 seconds. And he tries to do the pitch, but it's not working. So while the guy's busy, like, entertaining his guests before he comes back, Aram gets on his computer, starts hacking. The guy's like, are you doing that on my computer? He's like, get out of here. He's like, I got to take this call. Do not answer that phone. And Aram does it anyway. I love it. I was like, man, Cooper's just screwing you at every turn. It's like every time you're having some leeway, he's just kind of like, yeah, I need you to do this thing for me right now. He's even like, I'm not at my desk right now. I can't hack stuff for you. And it's like, no, nah, find a way to do it. Give me the name. It's like, you're so, come on. I've got a life that you're kind of screwing up right now. But I'm mean, at the end of the day, it worked because Aram and his business partner, uh, the guy they were trying to get interested in him, is interested. Uh, so because he's like, oh, Aram had big balls to pull off what he did. So he is impressed and he's interested in what they got to talk about. Obviously, um, Cooper talks to uh, Park about like, yeah, probably, you know, not want to base your relationship on a lie because eventually it's going to come out. And it's just like. It's, you know, having those complicated conversations, especially like, yeah, because she's just like, oh, I'm not lying. I'm just not, you know, it was just kind of essentially like, I'm just not telling him the truth. I'm just trying to keep the peace. But it's like, yeah, that's going to blow back on you at some point. But, um, yeah, uh, I love that uh, wrestler. I think this is the first time we've ever really, maybe it's come up before, maybe. I'm trying to remember, like, maybe, like, while he was recovering um, he grew some facial hair, but like more often than not, and I guess it fits with the whole um, FBI agent situation. But he's usually cleanly shaven, so to see him with a whole bunch of facial hair and just like I love everyone being like, "Oh, you look like a mess." Even Dimby in his like high days being like, "Are you okay? You look like a mess." He's like, and uh, Russell's like, "Is it really that bad?" And I love that um, even Aram being like, "Yeah, it it, it real it's it's really bad." I love that. It's like because you don't see him that kind of disheveled looking. I mean, considering everything, it makes the most sense. But um, at the end of the day, they're, you know, the uh, main guy behind, you know, kind of the successor to the Skinners kidnapped the family. Um, uh, the husband, the wife, and the child, and is going to try and get what he wants out of them. Um, obviously, they've got his name at the end because it turns out he's the next name on a blacklist. And Reddington was going to walk away from everything, like, and you know, because he's like, right, I, I can't do this. Because for him, it's like, he talked about being in a monastery, and he found like, some piece that he's like, it's basically like a paper, uh, an origami crane that could easily be broken at any moment in time. And for him, it's like, because of everything that happened with Liz, like he feels like he owes it to not dive deeper into this, you know, and it just kind of like to walk away and it's just like going back into that life. And just once again, like, it's not like he's completely abandoned it to some extent, but we don't know how hands on he is with a lot of the business stuff. But, um, wrestler came to him personally. It's like, yeah, um, I, this is the last place I wanted to be, but this is where I need to be because, I hate you, Reddington, but I loved Liz more because obviously she wanted a normal life with her daughter, which Reddington's like, it's not just Agnes she wanted a normal life with. She wanted a normal life with you. And it's like, at the end of the day, Liz believed in the blacklist. Obviously, like, she was willing to do everything to take over for it. She sacrificed everything, even her own life, to do that, to protect the blacklist. And we've let it go dark for the past two years. And us, if we don't pick up where Liz left off with the blacklist, then we're not honoring her memory. We're not keeping her will alive because she was willing to sacrifice everything for it. So, wrestler's willing to put his issues aside if it means continuing what Liz wants. And I even love the lady that's with him being like, oh, I like wrestler. He has a good soul. And Reddington's like, he does. He's like, no, I'm not sure if I can say the same thing about myself. So the fact is that the moment he gets on this path again, there's no getting off. It's like, it's time for Raymond Reddington kind of went into like a little early retirement. It was supposed to be a permanent retirement, but uh, time to slip back into uh, hat mo tilted down and embrace the raving Reddington. If like, like I said, I think going forward, it'd be interesting if that's the direction they go, where he tries to make the entire new task force. Like what that looks like now, um, is definitely gonna be interesting. This wasn't really. I mean, I guess this is a two part, or doesn't really say like a to be continued. At least not that I was aware of. But um, yeah, I'm surprised. Like it's like no everything's like because they had a lot to fill in of like the aftermath of losing Liz and what that means so 
things are going to continue going forward, but also like what does the task force look forced to look like now now that they're not actually well the only one that's an actual still fbi agents are uh park but she's not in the field and um and dembe or being an actual agent which i love that uh wrestler was like how's that how did that work out like did, we're not doing background checks anymore and stuff like that so it's definitely going to be interesting to see where this new season takes us, there might be promotional material out there. I've avoided. I had no idea what to expect going into the season. I got some Google alerts from like Deadline articles and stuff like that, but I haven't read anything. Didn't want to read anything because I know I one that I got recommended was like the actor who plays Aram. Um, I believe yes, I believe yes. It might be Har- Aram. I'm trying to remember. I was about to say, was it Aram or was it Dembe? I think it was uh, the actor who plays Aram was um, interviewed about, like, you know, this. So, But, like like I said, I avoided watching it because I hadn't, I, you know, I typically don't read a lot of those articles. But once again, still, cause, because of the nature of what I look up, those always get Googled for me just because I'm like, oh, looking up the list of episodes and thumbnails for um, my reviews and stuff like that. Yada, yada, yada. It's boring stuff that I'm not going to get into. Oh, well, I kind of got into, but long story short, just leave it at that. But, um, uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this season unfolds. Um, is there going to be inter- any any interactions between Agnes? I don't know if they're going to touch on this at all. He still has a gr- well another grandmother out there, so I'm like, are they ever going to touch on that? That being Tom's mom, it's like she's still alive, and it's like, but it's like, uh, she might be super busy. I don't know what her schedule is like. So, I mean, she might also be pretty expensive. So it's probably not someone you can just casually get. They got her for like one episode post, uh, Tom's death. Um, his return to the redemption and, uh, his re- return from like, you know, redemption and everything, the black Lips redemption. And also, um, they just kind of wrote that off of like, yep, that's all resolved. Like she popped up in one episode post Tom's death. Because I'm, I'm blanking on her name for a second, but it's uh, Fam Key Jansen. Like, I don't know. She'd probably be pretty, like, expensive to get. So maybe that's, there's, maybe there's reasons why that. So, like, she made that one appearance after Tom's death. So, but it's like, yeah, he still has another grandmother out there. So, but I guess with the nature of things, it's like, right, Liz probably wouldn't want her, uh, her to be Agnes in a position where it's like, at least Scotty was like, yeah, like, you're in a position to protect. It, it's, it's a whole thing that I'm like, uh, Maybe that's why they've kind of written around that. I don't know. But um, it, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what this season has in store for us. Like, whether the task force becomes more official or whether it's just like, this is like more, this is even more so than before that this becomes quote unquote Reddington's task force. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how the season plays out, what's next for us. I mean, what the next episode alone has in store for us. It's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens next. Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.